Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am back with another video and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. It's going to be like part TBR, part wrap up, part book reviews. So I'm just going to be talking specifically though about the fact that it is nonfiction November. And so I read a few really great nonfiction books this month and I'm in the process of reading some so I thought that I would just come on here and kind of talk about that separate from just my whole wrap up so that I could talk about these a little bit more than I would by just giving like a small summary during a reading wrap up. Uh, I also got a lot of regular fiction reading done which I'll talk about in my wrap up. Great books. Um, that's always been something that's a lot easier to do because you can just breeze through those books. But this, this really took some thought. Uh, I definitely was working my brain. So if you're interested in seeing uh, what I've been reading for nonfiction November, keep watching. Make sure you press that subscribe button, press that thumbs up, and drop some in the comment section below. What nonfiction books have you been interested in reading? What have you been reading if you've been participating in nonfiction November? And let's get right into this. So the first nonfiction book that I really wanted to talk about, and honestly, I'll just I'll just talk about like all three of these. I really have been getting into bell hooks writing, and so I have three bell hooks books. I got two of them from the library, and then the other one I had on hold at the library, but I got tired of waiting for it, so I just bought a copy. And so the first one that I actually finished this month was All About Love by Bell Hooks. This really talks about how to create a world that really centers love, loving well, and loving honestly. One thing that Bell Hooks does really well is just interrogating like ideas that we've previously held and like kind of just telling you about yourself, honestly. With this, you kind of realize that after reading All About Love, I understand that there's just like a lot of personal work that I need to do to be able to love well and to be loving in a way that's not just self-serving, but also helping to build community and helping to build my own relationships. And this was just like a really, really transformative text for me this month. She says like some great things. Um, each chapter sort of has a topic to go along with it. So like you get, you get a chapter on honesty, a, champ a chapter on clarity, a chapter on commitment, a chapter on greed, um, community, mutuality, romance, um, loss. The, the chapter on loss really, really hit hard because, you know, like I, I think I've talked about this in previous videos, just sort of like the I, like dealing with grief and different things like that. That's been something that I've been working on, especially over this past year. And Bell Hooks like really just puts everything that I've been feeling sort of into words and then gives you something to work on with that. She talks a lot about how a lot of things in our lives and our relationships and you know like living in like this uh, this capitalist patriarchal society you know a lot of things have to do with power and understanding how to like build relationships where power is not that power struggle and the struggle to be able to be over somebody or to to have power over somebody, how you need to work on that. And, and we really won't get to the point that we really want to in society where everybody can love freely and can love well and love in a healthy way until we like eliminate and sort of like dismantle that, that power structure. And so All About Love, it was fantastic. I'm going to do a whole blog post with my full reviews of these books, but yeah, just All About Love was fantastic. And if you can see like these tabs, I ran out of tabs actually in the middle of reading this book. And so I ended up just like underlining. Yeah, it's fantastic. I actually bought it for a friend um, to read. And then I got, I got another friend to actually pick up this book. And so I'm just like, I'm letting everybody know that Bell Hooks, Bell Hooks has, uh, has a word. So at the beginning of the pandemic, actually, I put a bunch of Bell Hook books on hold at my local library. And you know, with everybody 
everybody trying to like get their, their anti-racist education on um, towards the beginning of this pandemic uh, and over the course of this pandemic. Bell Hooks books and Angela Davis and James Baldwin, huh, who? Can, would you be able to find a copy of The Fire Next Time at the library or in a bookstore? I finally got a hold of a copy of Ain't I a Woman, Black Women and Feminism. This was published in 1981. I think it was Bell Hook's second book. It was, it, it just is a huge groundbreaking feminist work, a Black feminist work, and it's something that people continue to cite today. And reading this, with this, Bell Hooks really like, she discusses in depth the history of racism and sexism in America. She like traces it from slavery all the way to, to like the present day when this was written. So the 80s, the, um, the rise of the feminist movement in um, during that time and really just talking about the effect that slavery, Reconstruction, Jim Crow, um, and the and the you know the different waves of the feminist movement had on Black women, the effect of patriarchy, the effect of sexism, the effect of um, you know capitalism, and the the changing landscape of the United States over the course of history, um, how that affected Black women, and what that really means for feminism and how we and how we define feminism and she gives this fantastic definition of feminism um because we we all know Chimamanda in flawless Beyonce sample oh girl and she gave that definition that very like like bare bones definition of feminism um believing in the social um, political and economic equality of the sexes, but Bell Hooks specifically says, this, to me, feminism is not simply a struggle to end male chauvinism or a movement to ensure that women will have equal rights with men. It is a commitment to eradicating the ideology of domination that permeates Western culture on various levels, sex, race, and class, to name a few, and a commitment to reorganizing U.S. society so that the self-development of people can take precedence over imperialism, economic expansion, and material desires. To me, she really like lays it out in a way that is a lot more full and it covers more bases than just like, just this, ba this base idea of equality and what we can sort of do to move forward. And so I think that Bell Hooks really gives those who want to take on this title of feminist, black feminist, a launching pad to really like advocate for and really actively participate in a feminist ideology and praxis. So I think that Ain't I a Woman, Black, Black Women and Feminism is just like, it's a necessary read. It's definitely a necessary read. And then I have not actually started this yet, but I know it's going to be good. This was the, is like the follow up to All About Love. It is called Salvation, um, Black People and Love. This one is, is supposed to really take a look like a historical and a cultural look into the transformative power of love specifically in the lives of African Americans. All about love is a lot more universal. It doesn't talk as much about race, it doesn't even really talk as much about like class and just like different things that would be affecting um, black people to sort of inform how we love and and how we can sort of develop a, a love ethic and so I'm really excited to start Salvation. I'll get to it now that I've like finished Now a Woman and I finished All About Love and I'm able to kind of like sit some of these to the side and really get into some more nonfiction. I don't want to overload myself with these books that I was reading. I really, I didn't even sit down and like read them all in like, because sometimes I do, I do sit down. If I'm really into a book, I'll sit down and read all the way through it. I don't think that you can always really do that with nonfiction. And so I took my time. I really was reading like um, a chapter, two or three chapters per night. With All About Love, I read a chapter a day. I journaled. I talked to my friends about it, what I was reading. And that was a really great, uh, really great for that one. With Ain't I a Woman, I think I read a chapter a day. And I probably will do the same with um, Salvation. I, th I think that this this book kind of goes without like the need for much explanation. Warmth of Other Sons, of course, by Isabel Wilkerson. A lot of people have been reading Cast, which, you know, I've heard things about. 
Um, but The Warmth of Other Suns really talks about America's Great Migration. And this has been really good because I have been uh, covering Chicago, specifically like post Great Migration with my students. And so this has been um, really helpful in terms of like my own teaching. And so I'm working my way through this. I'm really working my way through this. And um, it's, it's, it's written like in a story format. So it's not like, it's not as heavy as your usual like thick text like this. So it's pretty easy to get through. Just finding the time to sit down and actually read it. I was thinking about getting the audiobook. But the audiobook is like forty dollars. I might use one of my audit one of my audible credits to get it though. But yeah, the one through other sons talks about the Great Migration. You really it the information in it is fantastic. And just hearing these stories and it's really enjoyable to read. And this one is really good. It was really good. And I'm I'm working my way through it slowly but surely. Really talking about Chicago being in like the like the early 1900s like the first half of like the uh 20th century i love a raisin in the sun if you know any lorraine hansberry works then you probably know a raisin in the sun i had been listening to i think it was mark lamont hill's podcast and he had imani perry on there and she was talking about um looking for lorraine and i I've been wanting to learn more about the authors that I enjoy and actually reading about their lives and understanding context um, for the things that they've done and really understanding just like the like the the black radical tradition because I think that people continue to ignore the fact that black authors so many people during the Harlem Renaissance a majority of the writers during the Harlem Renaissance and during early 20th century they were communists. They were um, so they were communists and socialists, and they really were just like they were doing radical work, and it's sort of like pushed aside, especially. But one of the things, especially that people continue to ignore, besides their politics, is the queerness of so many black authors. They push James Baldwin's queerness to the side. They push the queerness of Langston Hughes to the side. You rarely hear people mention Audre Lorde's open queerness. Like the fact that Audre Lorde was not scared of people saying that she was a lesbian. She gave that title. She wrote essays about being a black lesbian feminist. Reading Looking for Lorraine, it really just, it opened my eyes to how amazing Lorraine Hansberry was and just like dropping so much information about, I think I was, I was actually tweeting about this, black literary beef. It like the fact that so many people, Harlem Renaissance, post Harlem Renaissance, you know, black arts era, you know, wherever, you know, especially during the early 20th century, there was just so much intensity <laughs> in the black art scene. And just learning about that and like seeing Malcolm X and Nina Simone, the fact that Nina Simone and James Baldwin were close friends, like besties with Lorraine Hansberry, Nina Simone singing at Lorraine Hansberry's funeral, somebody like Malcolm X, like sneaking into, like hiding, being like ducked out at Lorraine Hansberry's funeral three months before he was killed. It just puts history into like context things that like you never really hear much about and so this was just this was absolutely fantastic to read and Lorraine Hansberry deserves more because she wrote so much more than just A Raisin in the Sun. I think that I really I really want people to recognize Lorraine Hansberry for how amazing she was. Also recognizing her queerness because I think that's important. It's very important. This is a book that I actually just started but I think it follows in the vein of like learning a little bit more about geography, history, queerness in America. Um, when Brooklyn Was Queer by Hugh Ryan. I picked this up from the library. Also, I got a majority of these from the library. It starts with like Walt Whitman um, and the idea of like bodies of water being like a place where if you find a body of water, you will find queer people. And just how Brooklyn was transformed, how Brooklyn it, the the existence of queer people in Brooklyn prior to Stonewall. And so I'm I'm literally just like, uh, I think that I'm 20 pages in. 
I'm 20 pages into this so far, but it's interesting. And I think that, I think that it'll be good for me to actually read this, um, read more history of the, uh, of the queer community. You know, the past, the past is always important. So um, when Brooklyn was queer by Hugh Ryan. So I'm, I'm super glad that I was able to read so many of these so far in November. And by the time this is posted, there's still gonna be a few days left in November. So I'm going to try to like get through um, some of these, but also still taking my time, taking in the information. Really enjoyed nonfiction November. I've picked up some great books. I've learned so much so far. And I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Um, if you're interested in any of these books, um, if you have any questions about any of these books, definitely let me know in the comment section below. I'll try to do more videos like this where it's focused on certain areas. I know somebody actually commented on one of my videos asking if I could like recommend some nonfiction books. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you press that thumbs up button. Make sure you press that subscribe button. Make sure you leave some in the comment section below and I will see all of you very soon. And always remember that you are love.